Hello and welcome to the Legends of Runeterra 4.8 patch breakdown. With this patch being a variety set, we are being introduced to 10 new cards, which are designed to hint towards future expansions as well as help older archetypes. The new cards are the Crystalline Storm Raptor for Freljord, a 5 mana 3 2 with a play effect to deal 2 to all other units, Balan the Benevolent from Demacia, a 4 mana 0 4 with Formidable. When it attacks, it will grant all formidable allies everywhere 1 health. The Crimson Banquet Hall from Noxus, a 2 mana landmark that reduces the cost of all allies by 1, but when you play a unit, the landmark will deal 2 damage to it. Iris from Ionia, a 2 mana 1 1 elusive with Nexus Strike, summon a random husk. Divine Draft from PNZ, a 2 mana slow spell which deals 1 to the enemy or an enemy Nexus and then 1 to another. Proliferating Dark Wraith is for Shadow Isles, a 1 mana 1 1 with the last breath effect to create an exact copy of the strongest proliferating Dark Wraith in the deck and then doubling its stats. Tidal Invocation for Bilgewater, a 2 mana fast speed spell which deals 1 to a unit. It will then spawn for each damage it dealt. Cosmic Call for Targon, a 2 mana burst speed spell which invokes a celestial that costs 7 or more. If you pay 8, it will also reduce the cost of celestials everywhere by half rounded up. Valley of Imitation is for Sharima, a 3 mana landmark which will transform itself into the first follower you play for that round. It will also retain any granted buffs you give it. And finally, Mr. Thrift from Bandal City. He is a 1 mana 0 3 with the text, when one or more of your traps or boons activate, plant two of it in the player's deck. Moving on to balance changes. There are over 60 balance changes this patch, so we will start with the standard nerfs and buffs and then cover the eternal changes afterwards. Champion Strength is decreasing to 8 mana, but will no longer give units scouts. Fish Fight is increasing to 3 mana. Sump Monument is increasing to 4 mana. It will also plant 5 Poison Puff Caps instead of 4. Condense is increasing to 3 mana. Swain's Level Up Condition is increasing from 12 plus non-combat damage to 16. Pirouette is increasing to 3 mana. However, the Plunder Discount will be increasing to 2 mana, so once the Plunder has been activated, it will still cost 1 mana. Purifying Flames will now grant both allies plus 2 plus 2, instead of one receiving plus 3 plus 3 and the other receiving plus 2 plus 2. Ward Broadmain is losing 1 point of health and will become a 3-4. Vaults of Helia is increasing to 5 mana. Squeaker is losing 1 point of power and will return back to a 1-2. Returnal Wrench is gaining 1 point of health, however, it will lose its impact keyword. And the final nerf for standard is for Fleet Admiral Shelley, who will be losing its Atun keyword. Moving on to the standard buffs. Both the Warlord Palace and the Warlord's Horde are returning back to Countdown 8. Riven will now grant herself the increased amount of power she gives herself on the level 2. The Poro King will create a special snack in hand when he levels up. Frosted Snack will change from Frostbite an enemy with 3 or less health to Frostbite an enemy. Sun Guardian is gaining 1 health, returning back to its 2-3 stat line. Rocket Barrage is increasing its damage to deal 4 to the targeted units. Bristle Hog will now grant itself plus 2 plus 1 instead of plus 1 plus 1. The Blimp Pack Poacher is gaining 1 point of health. Nami's level up requirements has changed. She will now level up when she will play 6 plus spells with an allied Nami on board. With this being a more difficult level up requirement to meet, Riot has also reverted the nerf to her level 2, and she will now grant other allies plus 2 plus 1 again. The Dragon Guard Lockout is gaining 2 power, and will now become a 5-5. Five five. Strafing Strike will now heal dragons 5 instead of 2. Confront will now draw 1 if you target a dragon ally. Finally, the last buffs to standard will be to Thread the Needle, Eradication, and Dawning Shadow. They are all reducing their cost by 1, and will be 2, 5, and 6 mana respectively. This patch also has 3 adjustments. Jax will now level up when she've attacked with 16 plus power from equipped allies, and both the Portal Scholar and the Realm's Caretaker have been adjusted from Yordles to Phase. Moving on to the Eternal Balance changes. Since we have received the Eternal nerfs in the last patch notes, we don't actually have any nerfs to cover in this patch. So, all of the upcoming cards are going to be buffed for the Eternal format. Leeson's level up condition is reducing from 10 plus spells to 8. Yone is decreasing in cost to 6 mana. The Windfair Hatchling is gaining plus 1 plus 1. Scattered Pod is becoming a 5 mana 5 5 with no attune. Fuzzy Caretaker is gaining 1 health. The Ritual of Renewal is changing speed from slow to burst. It's also important to note that the Ritual of Renewal is available in standard via the Ionian Tailstones, so this buff also applies to standard. Thorny Toad is changing from a 1-4 to a 3-1. Ancient Crocolith is gaining the fearsome keyword. Withering Mist is reducing its cost to 4 mana. Mountain Scryer is gaining plus 1 plus 1. The Fangs are gaining 1 point of power. Arbiter of the Peak is gaining plus 1 plus 1. Star Tipped Peak is decreasing to 1 mana. Wish is also decreasing its cost and will now cost 2 mana. Giddy Archaeologist is gaining plus 1 plus 1. 
Laurent Chevalier, the Swiftling Lancer, and the Great Horn Companion are all gaining one point of health. Voiding Stones, Academy Prodigy, and Insightful Investigator are all also gaining one health. Egnivia is gaining one point of health as well. The Rhinefang Wolf is gaining one point of power. The Averroes and Outriders are gaining plus one plus one. Radiant Guardian is gaining 1 point of power, returning to her old stat line of a 5 5. Molten Breath is decreasing its cost by 1. Stalking Broodmother is gaining plus 1 plus 1. Abyssal Guard is gaining the Attune keyword. Lost Riches is decreasing its cost to 3 mana. And for our final buffs, the Yordle Newbie and the Loping Telescope are both gaining 1 point of power. For Eternal Adjustments, we are finally getting the Vladimir Change slash rework. He will be gaining the following text to his card Play. Deal 1 to any number of allies to deal that much to an enemy. I've also had confirmation from Riot that this play effect will be a skill, so here is the mock-up of the version of the card that you will see in-game. The new Legends of Runeterra Emporium is open for business, a new in-game shop personalised just for you. The Emporium features four different types of offers, from common to legendary, with a mix of green shards, coins and stardust purchase options. Riot provided a small Q&A in their patch notes, so I'll read this out for you now. Will I be able to obtain cosmetics that run special event cosmetics, including items from previous battle passes? Yes, some of these items have a chance to appear in your Emporium. However, the most surefire way to get the cosmetics from the battle pass is to purchase them when they're live and active. Are battle pass items available right away in the Emporium? No. In order to maintain prestige from the battle pass, items have a cooldown period before they can appear in your Emporium. You'll be able to show off that you unlocked it first just for a little bit. How will the Battle Pass items be priced when they appear in the Emporium? TLDR is that they'll be much cheaper to earn the cosmetic items via the Battle Pass. You'll have a chance to snag some of these in the Emporium in the future, but it'll cost more. I don't play Path of Champions, will I still get Path of Champions items in my Emporium? Sometimes, but your Emporium will be heavily weighed to reflect on how you play. If you don't play Path as much, Path specific offers will appear less often. If you only play Path, more will show up. Will cosmetics gained in competitions such as the Runeterra Opens or Gauntlets appear in the Emporium? No. These are indicators of your accomplishments and won't be obtainable via the Emporium. How often does the Emporium update? There are different tiers of rarity, each with their own update frequency. Check out your own Emporium and see the handy timer that shows you when the next reset is coming. Moving on to Path of Champions. Just a quick thing before we start, I personally don't play Path of Champions, so if I get any of the terminology wrong, please excuse the mistake. With the introduction of Emporium, Riot are adding a few things to the Path of Champions. Stardust and Epic Relics. Stardust will be converted from duplicate champion fragments and relics. Stardust can be used to purchase golden reliquaries or buy some of the Path of Champions specific items that are offered in the Emporium. Epic relics are incredibly powerful and are only obtained through the new Emporium system. Here are the upcoming relics available to purchase. Chosen by the stars. Fated. Empowered 10. Overwhelm. Regeneration. Challenger. Death Spoil. When I'm attacking, I can't die or take damage. Discipline of Shadows. I cost one less for each ally in play. Play. Deal three to all other allies. Echoing Spirit. Game starts. Create seven copies of me in your deck. Oath of the Guardians. Play. Shuffle five level two champions in your deck and double their stats. Packed Powder. Plunder. I cost one less. I have plus one plus one for each different round you've damaged the enemy nexus. Portal Pal. When I'm summoned, create 7 7 plus cost units from your region and reduce their cost by my base cost. Spirit of Buru. Other 1 cost allies have Overwhelm, Quick Attack, and Fury. The Beast Within. Allies with the subtype have plus 1 plus 1 and Overwhelm. Riot have also included a slew of adjustments across several portions of the Path of Champions. The following champions will be available to obtain as support champions Samira, Nidalee, Nico, Jack, Maokai, Nora, and Ryze. The following support champ loadouts have been adjusted. Zed. Deathmark has been replaced by Shadow Shift. Orn. Orn's Forge has been replaced by the Darkened Spear. The following champion's base decks have been adjusted. Samira. Arel the Tracker has been replaced by Captain Idari. Adventure nodes are also being adjusted. They will make their contents more appealing. Spell chests will now show a minimum value of rare. Spells that your current main champion can use effectively will appear more frequently. In the shop, Cards that your current main champion can use effectively will appear more frequently. The Mist Wraiths, found in the Edgalio adventure, are going to be changed so that the Grasp of Undying will now cost 2 less rather than give 2 additional damage. And the Yearling Yeti, found in the Thresh adventure, will have its attack nab 1 changed to Ran Start, gain an extra mana gem. The following are going to be the Relic adjustments. 
The curator's gale breaker is going from when I'm summoned, I strike the enemy nexus, to minus one, minus zero, play, I strike the enemy nexus. Gale force is going from scout, round end, recall me, to scout, round end, shuffle me into your deck. Voidborn is going from when any unit dies, grant me its keyword, to evolve, when any unit dies, grant me its keyword. Star gem is going from allied champions have plus one, plus one, to Allied champions have plus one, plus one, and cost two less. The following are item adjustments. The flash bomb satchel is going from when I'm summoned, plant two flash bombs in the top eight cards of the enemy deck, to when I'm summoned, plant four flash bombs in the top eight cards. Targon's brace is going from support, give my supported ally plus one, plus one this round, to support, grant my supported ally plus one, plus one. Nora's teacup is going from common to rare. The last change is to power adjustments. Quick Draw is going from common to rare, Wild Inspiration is going from common to rare, Higher Education is going from common to rare, Fast Deal is going from common to rare, Grit is going from rare to common, and Reunited is going from rare to common as well. As always, there's a few bug fixes in this patch, but nothing major to comment on this time. That's all for this patch breakdown video. Don't forget to make sure you follow us on Twitter to keep up to date on all things Legends of Runeterra, and leave a like on this video if you enjoy these patch breakdown videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in four weeks time for the next Legends of Runeterra expansion.